Right, and this Long Beach City movement, uh, I guess, is a mixtape. Yeah, it was. It was yeah. a mixtape. You're on it. Yeah, I got the last song. The last song, number right? Twenty one, General Vet. Yeah, I uh, gave it to him. Yeah, I gave him the whole thing, all three barrels. <laughs> I had a triple barrel gauge on that song. <laughs> I gave it to him. Let's see who else. Daz is on it. Mm -hmm. uh, half dead. Is that a little half dead? Yeah, a little half dead. Okay. Uh, See who else? Superflies on it, no doubt. Okay, and then then a bunch of looks like a bunch of new dudes. Yeah, yeah. You know, Beefy Banks, Zilla, and Easy J. Like, yeah, okay. yeah. He, he brought yeah he brought about twelve or 13, 14 people to the table. I mean, swoop. the one thing about Snoop is that you always hear him on on projects with new West Coast rappers that obviously never paid him. You know what I'm saying? Meaning that like he's doing it for free. Wow. You know what I mean? Like <laughs> clearly you're coming up, you can't afford a Snoop verse. Like, you know, <laughs> whatever that ticket is. Right. Like, right. So it seemed like he he always gives back and tries to to help out up and coming, especially West Coast rappers. What? Especially LA rappers. Yes, he he does that. You know what I'm saying? He you know, he brought me in the game, so I can't really very much dispute that. You know what I mean? <laughs> right. and, since that time, you know, he's he's had a, a you know, a, a, a history of always finding dope talent, you know, somewhere around and endorsing it, you know. And so, yeah, he, he, he does give back. He does reach back. You know, he brought me, Badass, uh, you know, Lil C style. Everybody from the dog pound pretty much in the game, you know what I'm saying? Because he was the one. So, you know, I always give him a personal appreciation for that as well, you know. It's dope how he does that. Like you say, you really couldn't afford a Snoop verse, you know, <laughs> as <laughs> as he is to the industry or whatever. So, you know, him him doing that shows that he he has a real love for the culture beyond just money, money, money. Right, yeah. right. Because I mean, Snoop Snoop's made it. Yeah, he has. Snoop Snoop's an icon now. Yeah, he Snoop is. is doing cooking shows to Martha Stewart. I mean. <laughs> I mean, you know, Joker's wild. He got yeah. a, he got a game show. He got a game. Got a, oh, this I didn't know. Yeah, he's yeah, got a game yeah, show. Yeah, he's got a game show called Joker's, Joker's wild. wild. Yeah, well, I'm about to look this up. Yeah, he do he doing this stuff, man. You know, and uh, you know, we still maintain close contact. You know, when necessary. You know, but uh, you know, I'm pushing my line, doing my thing, and you know, he supported. Okay, he's got a red velvet suit on. <laughs> 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 He ain't playing. Uh, okay, I didn't even know. Yeah. What what channel is this on? Oh, what does that show on? You know, I got TBS. The, I got I got set TV. So T you TBS Joker's my... Wild. Yeah, first episode <laughs> was, was in oh in October. It just it just started. It just yeah. started a couple months ago. Yeah, it did. It did. It's fresh debut. Snoop is always working, man. Yeah, yeah. You he's always, the man. Yeah, he's the man. man in the game. Yeah, yeah. And, I'm, and I'm sure that was a big inspiration for for Long Beach. Yeah. Where you see someone coming out of that same environment, broke, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, come you know, from hustling, hustling, out of his car. Getting arrested, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, And then suddenly turning into, into this and bringing up so many other people along for the ride. Yeah. You yeah. know, like, like Daz is still good. Yeah. Daz still got a Bentley, yeah. you know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, like. Yeah. House that, and house houses here, and, house there. Yeah, in Atlanta, yeah. there. Yeah. Like, like right. he's got, you know, uh, you know, Warren G still good. Mm -hmm. He, he got, mm -hmm. a, got a nice situation Thank going. God. Yeah, still, still touring around, doing shit. Mm -hmm. Yeah, man, it's still it's, real too. He still reaches back too. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Uh, he did a couple of tracks on my new artist um, project. You know, so he's a. Uh, yeah, he, you know, whenever I call, he's on the, my album, the Third Coming. He's on uh, just the, because it was done. So he was like, he he came to this actual signing of my new artist. And he was like, he was like, I played my album. He was like, it's finished? I said, yeah, G-Dub, I told you I was working. He said, man, I got to get on there. I got to do something. So we put him on the outro of a song I did with my wife, uh, uh, Cognac, called... Uh, uh, can't fuck with this. Mm. So yeah, he just he just did me a little voice on at the end. But you know, he's a uh, yeah, Warren G still connected mm. to the community as well. Well, and then we forgot a very important one, uh, Nate Dogg. 
Rest in peace. Rest in peace. Yeah, yeah. We ain't never gonna forget Nate Dog. Yeah. We always shout him out in our shows, and you know, people like you know Crooked Eye even got a personal a segment of his show that he dedicates to you know to to Nate right. Dog. Right. Another you know. another Long Beach rapper. Yeah, Crooked, Crooked Eye. Eye. Yeah, my yeah, bad. We, we forgot, forgot him the forgot first time. Crook. Yeah. yeah, you know, we, <laughs> we Crook is like the MC of Long Beach. You know what I'm saying? He's like he's the slaughter. He's the slaughterhouse elite. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, I might have to say, I mean, people are probably going to disagree with me or whatever, but I'm going to have to say that Nate Dogg was the most talented one to come out of Long Beach in terms of just pure talent. Hmm. Nate Dogg. Mm. I'm going to say that. I'm going to go on the record and mm. say that that's, that that's my favorite, my favorite dude to come out of Long Beach, Nate Dogg. Yeah. I mean, I'm... What what I'm Nate not, Dogg did? I'm not gonna challenge that. What Nate Dogg yeah. did with the gangster singing, like no one's ever done that before at all, at all. Now people do it all the time. There's it's all the norm. It's the norm. It's yeah. regular shit. You right. know what I'm saying? Right. But when when Nate did it, it was like here is a an R and B dude who's talking that shit. <laughs> like you know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. Like he's talking that shit. That shit, shit. Like this isn't for the ladies, really. Like right. this is this was the first. Like that that was the, as a, as a man, that was the first R and B dude that I really like. Yo, I really like this dude. Like this, he's 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 doing it for me. Right. And if the ladies like it, then that's fine too. But <laughs> yeah, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, like, yeah. I got an instant relation with what he's talking about. Yeah, yeah. And he came up like that. You know what I'm saying? You know, Nate Dogg is you know rest in peace. Nate Dogg was. He was he was unbelievable. He loved music, you know what I'm saying? And you know, he was he was a solid brother on top of what he said. He said it and he meant it. You know, he wasn't the most friendly type, you know what I mean? <laughs> Didn't seem know, like it. At all. You know, <laughs> or he was the antithesis of what you would imagine an R and B dude to be. Right. You know, and uh yeah, Nate Nate Dog gave us the flavor, man. He gave us he gave us and Mac, I remember the first song I did with him called Bag of Weed. And uh he called me to the studio and he said, Yeah, I'm I'm almost finished with my album. He said, You know I gotta get you on here. And that was I ain't gonna lie, I pulled up the pair of my studio. That was like one of the most memorable moments of my early career too. Nate Dog actually calling me up to his studio session to do a song just me and him. Yeah, I, like, I, I love that album. Like, was it G Funk Classics? Yeah, G Funk Classics Volume One. Yeah, I think that he just got caught in the transition of Death Row. Mm. You see what I'm saying? Like mm. if he had, if Death Row was still popping, right? Kind of, you know, same thing happened to Rage. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? Like mm -hmm. by the time Rage's album come out, everyone left, and you know what I'm saying? You know, Tupac was gone, and Dre was gone, and. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, there's not a lot of real promotion and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. He just, he had to drop it, like, independently, like, years later, right? Well, it, it, I, I, he had a deal with... Um, but it didn't come out under Death Row is what I'm saying. No, it didn't come out under Death Row. He got a deal with another label. I don't I don't think it was Aristotle. I'm thinking of a label that started with an A or something. And yeah. he, he did a deal with them, but it wasn't with Death Row because I think he saw what was going on over there. And, you know, Nate was military at the same time. So, you know, Nate would have been in somebody's bushes with a camouflage suit on about it. So he just probably didn't even want to go that route, you know. Well, I had, uh, I'd interviewed Michelle A. a while ago. She had mentioned that in the in the early days of Death Row, when, when the money was really coming in, uh, Nate Dogg robbed a, a Taco Bell. And I guess Sugar had to bail him out, had to make that situation go away. Yeah. That's when I met him, when I was going to court. With, <laughs> I went, I was going to court for myself, and I saw a little half dead at the courthouse. And I said, what you doing down here? He said, I'm down here with my cousin, because, you know, that's their cousin. He's like, I'm down here with my cousin. You know what I'm saying? He, he, he fighting a robbery. I'm like, who? He's like, Nate Dogg, you don't know now? I was like, no, nah, I don't. But, you know what I'm saying? I was on my way out. We was passing by the door. I'm like, all right. So I stepped in with him, and I heard I heard him, you know, <laughs> discussing this case. And he was like, yeah, he jumped over the counter and this and that. I was like, oh, I was like, this is my kind of guy right here. So, 
I didn't even actually meet him that day. You know, I just, you know, I was in his presence that day and then we wound up meeting later on. He, he I don't even know if I ever told him that I went to that court, that I stepped <laughs> in his court that day. But yeah, Nate was rugged, man. Yeah, man, that, that, was, that was a big loss, especially so young. Oh, yeah. Well, he was in his early 40s? Like late thirties? Yeah, I think think late thirties. I think he was in late thirties. I, I was incarcerated at the time when it happened. So Hold you on, know, uh, I, I, you. I didn't 41. get a chance. Right, just, yeah, 41. I didn't get a chance to make it to I, I I I remember when he had um first went in and I talked to uh Pimpin' Young and he was telling me that him and I talked to Exhibit and they was going out there to see him and stuff and then he had made a partial recovery. And we was all praying and hoping that he he made it back, and uh, you know, just he relapsed again, and they said it was worse. And you know, next thing I know, my wife was sending me obituary up in up in CMC. Yeah, that that was a rough one, man. Yeah, it was. You know, it was just... a big loss to us as well. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, you know what I'm saying, personally, because, you know what I mean, we play basketball, we go over each other's houses, and, you know what I'm saying, we hang out, you know, off time, you know. Me and Nathan went to jail together. I done went to his parents' house in Mississippi a couple of times with him. So, you know, we, we have real relationships and friendships beyond what, you know, what you see on videos and things like that. So, yeah, it was, it was a big loss to everybody. 